What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to talk about the phases of training and where you should be training. So uh, typically a beginner, say at New Year's, jumps into training and they don't know exactly where they should be training. This is where uh, CrossFit comes into play. It's where people end up doing too much too soon and they end up being too sore to continue after about a week. This is because someone who just starts their training doesn't necessarily understand how they should start their training. Like, a lot of people are unfamiliar with stability in general when it comes to the training, but as far as all fitness goes, people should follow these phases step by step. Some people, as they train, they'll stop with hypertrophy. Hypertrophy is overall muscle growth. Some people don't even get the strength and most people don't get the power. See, power is basically the whole premise of CrossFit. It's speed training, like moving as fast as possible, and it basically skips all of the beginning phases of training and goes right into power. This is like, picture somebody doing a hang clean as fast as they can for more than the usual amount of reps and they'll end up getting themselves hurt. So that's why stability is so important. People come into training, they do a small dose of sets. You don't wanna go right into four, five, six sets of 12 just yet. You don't wanna go into a weight that you start to fail and get fit, like way too fatigued right out the gate. You want to pick a weight for you that you can perform 12 to 20 reps with at a steady tempo. So stability, as you can see, it goes a long range, 12 to 20. Now what that would look like is a 20 rep set could be just a good, slow, controlled, that's the key, controlled tempo for a longer duration of a set. Now the 12 rep set will look just about the same, but the reps will be a little shorter. For instance, on a lap pull down, it's like you perform the rep and then you slow it down on the way up. So the longer a set goes, the longer an individual rep goes, the more small stabilizing muscles have to join in and um, just stabilize the body to keep continuing the movements. It's all neurological and it's all a lot of uh, like, um, adjustments that the body makes along the way. So again, what this would look like is a beginner in the gym, they shouldn't go straight to the heavy weights that they see these more seasoned lifters doing. Um, for instance, someone's first leg day that they ever do can be, it can be body weight squats done at a controlled range of motion. This will, like especially controlling it, maybe pausing at the bottom, coming up, making sure that your form is perfect and building good habits. That's another thing, building good habits to the stability. The more volume you do at a lower weight, the more the muscles, all the small muscles and the big muscles will work together and create the strongest foundation. You wanna have a strong foundation before you jump into heavier weights with greater tension. And another thing is, a lot of times when it comes to hypertrophy, banging out a quick set of 12 curls may work a small portion of the, of the bicep, but if you continuously like rack up the time under tension, a greater volume, a greater surface area of that muscle is gonna get activated and more muscle fibers are gonna be involved in the, uh, in the exercise. So that being said, moving on to hypertrophy, um, as you move down the phases of training, you don't wanna completely just forget about the last one. Even all the way down to power, I'll show you guys in a little bit what a model of a train, like a training model would look like. As you move down the phases of training, you should continue to incorporate each of these phases, but you just wanna add one at a time. So here goes hypertrophy, you know, three to six sets, six to 12 reps. Now these are all typical numbers, like the initial prescription to exercise when an individual starts working out. But you know, there's 10 sets of 10, there's more than that, there's, everyone has their own programming, but this is typically what you prescribe a newbie going into each of these phases. So. Hypertrophy, say you do six sets of 12 on incline bench. That's a big workload, but some people do it. Now, for stability purposes, you're gonna need to balance that out with some upper back work. If you're just gonna push and not do any face pulls, any back work, you're gonna end up finding yourself hurt. So stability, and this, I didn't point this out for strength and endurance. The strength is more or less 12 reps and just like fighting the time under tension over and over again and incorporating more small muscle fibers and over here 20 reps basically endurance 
like you still go for a longer duration of time, your body neurologically gets used to what you're doing, and overall, your whole body, it's, it's, it always factors into strength. But just what matters is it's stability. Now, again, hypertrophy. You need to do stability throughout the workout still to balance out all the movements that you do. Because again, if you're just gonna hit six sets of 12 and work the top of your chest, like, and not hit all the, all the directions, on, like all the angles on the muscle, you're not gonna have a fully developed pectoral muscle. And this could be inclined, this could be like flat bench, like this is all just uh, hypothetical examples. But without incorporating stability into your training on certain sets, whether it be isometrics with a lighter load or just extended sets at a slower, more tense pace, the muscle won't fully develop the health of the muscle and your entire body won't fully develop. You'll never reach what you're capable of doing fully and you'll also increase your risk of injury. Next up, max strength. Max strength requires hypertrophy, strength stability, and stability endurance. That's how you put it. Each of these builds up to the max strength. A lot of people, they don't get the max strength because uh, say you're a 38 year old Mike who's 220 pounds trying to lose Trying to lose his gut and you know tone up some muscle so he can impress the wife again. <laughs> Typically, you're not going to seek max strength to, to reach your goals. However, you can you can certainly keep increasing strength with these rep ranges and, and these set ranges throughout bench and big lifts. And they do. It is important to do strength training as long as it's controlled and stable. You're not going to go from stability right to max strength though. Typically, people don't put on a lot of size. Very stability, although anyone when they start training, they're gonna see size gains. But typically you're not gonna put on the size to reach your full durability to do maximal strength training and also hypertrophy training while you're gonna gain the like, training and all that volume, your metabolism is gonna increase too. So there's a whole lot that factors in there. You wanna just don't don't cut corners, go down the line. Max strength, you, again, you wanna have some muscle mass, lean muscle mass from hypertrophy and stability, factoring it together to have fully developed muscles to allow you to, to um, healthily increase your sets and your workload. You don't wanna find yourself working through a workout program that eventually you find yourself not hitting the numbers because your body is responding incorrectly. Maybe your elbow hurts, your back's a little stiff one day, shoulders hurt a little bit, that's because your body just can't handle the workload. You haven't fully developed it properly. Last up, I got power. Um, I'm not gonna cover power super in depth in this video because I'm kind of targeting this for people to, that need to know that they need to start with stability training before even working into hypertrophy in order to get their muscles uh, properly working and get their, their body used to working out before they do too much too soon. But power is basically meant for a sports performance athlete you know, football, uh, soccer, or any sport really, but what comes to mind is Olympic lifting. And even so, you look at CrossFit and you see them do these sets of 10, you know, half cleans, I just elbow tendonitis, uh, you know, those kind of things. <laughs> but typically for power, you're looking at three to five sets and, or a lot more as Olympic lifter. And you, your maximal effort, not your maximal effort, your multi effort is looking at three to five reps it's not looking at 10 reps. It's, look, it's not looking into that hypertrophy range. You're doing a decently, it's a lengthy set because as those reps go, as those muscles fatigue, well, as your neuromuscular junctions fatigue, because that's what strength and power are typically about, you're not looking at 10 reps. Because if you are, you're, you're going too fast, you're not focusing on form and you're probably gonna hurt yourself. Or a maximal effort, looking at just maximum speed, maximum power output, one to two reps. We're talking like these Olympic lifters um, doing power cleans, clean and jerk, or power snatches. They're training for those one to two rep uh, outputs. And those aren't gonna, while it's gonna be great for development, and especially their accessory movements, like muscle ups and back squats, front squats, shoulder press, these are gonna be great for development. That's, they're training for their craft. There's no reason for Mike to do power cleans for one to two reps after doing a few sets of uh, pec flies and <laughs> machine bench. All right. So what would the programs look like for each of these days? I'm not gonna go into depth um, because there's a 
a lot of whole other videos for that. But basically, um, and a lot of this factors in muscle fiber types, you know, hypertrophy, well, hypertrophy can do, it'll probably be type 2A and type 1 muscle fibers. I'll do a whole other video on that. So if you don't understand that yet, just bear with me. Stability hypertrophy, type 1 and type 2A. Maximal strength, type 2A, uh, mostly, and also could be type 2X as well, but type 2X is primarily that maximum effort on power for that one explosive clean. Um, even sprints are typically not considered type 2X. But, so, based on that, I'll explain that on each of these days. Uh, stability day, you're looking at three days. You go in like Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, it's good to do three days, 30 minutes a day. You know, stability training. Do your movements, make sure it's a balanced program, typically full body, and it can be full body as long as you give yourself at least 48 hours to recover all your muscles. Same thing for hypertrophy, although it would be four to, it could be it could be three days, but probably four to six days. You're looking at 45 to 60 minutes. Some people they spend, uh, I mean, three hours in the weight room. I know I'm guilty of that too, but I do a little bit of talking because I live with I live with my girlfriend. So, Ew. you're looking at <laughs> you're looking at four to six days, and if you're in there cranking some music and you're utilizing proper rest periods, we're looking at 45 to 60, sometimes up to 90 seconds. I almost said minutes, but sometimes 45 seconds to 60 seconds when you do your rest, and you'll be out of there pretty pretty soon. You won't be there very long, keep a nice intense workout, and typically you get better results doing that anyway. So now strength, well, since the muscle fibers of strength and hypertrophy are two different uh, types of deals, and to break it down a little deeper for you, hypertrophy muscle fibers going on from like eight to 12 and beyond, you're fatiguing the muscle spindles, Whereas if you're doing one to five, maybe six reps of strength, you're not fatiguing the muscle spindles necessarily, you're fatiguing your, your brain more like it, your neuromuscular junction. And that's why psyching yourself out before a heavy lift is real because you're exhausting your brain beforehand. So myth, myth not busted. So we're looking at, this could be strength, strength, hypertrophy, hypertrophy. And you know, it could be, it could also be if it was six days, it could easily be uh, upper body strength, upper body hypertrophy, lower, lower, or full, full, it could easily be the same as that. And you can do type one muscle fibers and then come back the next day. Like if this was, if this was lower body um, type one muscle fibers, you can come back the next day and do lower body type two muscle fibers and train them for strength. You probably don't wanna go and do three sets of 20 with seated leg curls two days in a row, but you could do heavy squats the day after you do for the um, lengthy sets of hypertrophy training on your legs. So that's what it could look like, you know, alternating back and forth mouth work. It's kind of tricky. And again, this is useless information to Mike or whoever else is out there. Just trying to get the six pack back. Uh, sports performance program could have you doing power training once a week. And the whole point of this is to show that other phases of training have to factor in. Power training, and then could be lower body strength, upper body hypertrophy, lower body hypertrophy, upper body strength. And see, it still periodizes in a way that you don't train any muscles two days in a row, except for, you know, power training and then leg strength, you know, whatever. So maybe we'll just switch that up real quick. There, much better. And of course, Stability training has to be factored in here. I can't just put, I can't put S for strength and stability, but stability training can be as simple as taking time to warm up with dynamic movements, not just arm circles or swinging around, but getting a resistance band and doing pull aparts, squeezing your mid traps, your rhomboids and your whole upper back. Or it could be just taking time to do actual warm up sets before you do a strength movement. Like if you're gonna do a bench press for sets of five, why not take a, a set of doing set, like 75% where you really focus on five reps, like say your max is, uh, say it's 225. Why not take a set of 135 and just focus on really slowing down the tempo and warming yourself up? Why not take two sets to do that? You're not necessarily gonna fatigue your muscles if you're doing it at that range, especially because the output is not gonna be nearly the same as max strength. Because you know if you're 
max is 225, it's not going to take that much neuromuscular uh, junction power to do 135. So basically what this all points to is that while you don't have to be in the strict stability phase of training, whatever phase of training that you are in, that you know you're in, has to include stability training. And all this means is warm up with your resistance bands, warm up the range of motion. This could be for legs or arms. I'll show you a couple in just a minute. It could be high volume on some days, some sets, I'm talking like up to 20. High volume is good. It works a lot more muscles than we realize that we'll always factor in and completely build around our compensations and our weak points. Or just long sets. And that means, especially on the eccentric, the eccentric portion of the movement is basically the negative. I'll show you guys in a second. That just means slowing that down, allowing your muscles to have to throw in a lot of extra smaller supporting muscles to support the movement. So basically, if you think about this, it's not all about just before your upper body day, you know, doing some band pull apart. It's like, man, just getting through this. It's about either warming up different ranges of motion that we realize aren't typically utilized. I'm talking all the way up, all the way back, like full pass-throughs. This basically warms up your entire AC joint. Or if you do want to just do pull aparts, it's about utilizing your elbows, really squeezing them behind you, squeezing each time Maybe coming in, doing a little hold all the way up. And then of course you can just crank out some reps, but utilizing some individual reps to really activate those muscles. What it can also mean is say on leg day, and this I've done this before with hexagonal bar deadlifts. It could mean just squatting a couple sets with lower weight, really utilizing the descent, maybe hold a couple squeezes. Come all the way up, squeeze the glutes, just focus on all the muscles getting hit. And doing this for 20 reps or more. Could be done for more than one set too. Oh, and then lastly, this is where just slowing things down comes into play. A one-arm shoulder press, you know, anyone can just crank out the weight. But in order to properly develop your shoulder, and especially for the shoulder, because the shoulders are easily injured, they are the most injury prone in my opinion, just slowing down the eccentric a little bit. So up, slow down, up, bring it down slow, controlling your range of motion, because the more you train in a certain range of motion, like the more you focus on developing good habits, the more they will translate to when you pick up the heavier weights. Guys, hope you enjoyed this video. I'm gonna do more videos um, regarding individual aspects of the training, individual exercises. Anything you have questions on, let me know in the comments. Like, subscribe, let me know what you think, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.